Okay, this video is part three in a three-part series on real-world uh, data acquisition and signal processing using C Sharp, and we're also, we also talk about using MATLAB to generate some uh, analog signals we can feed into our data acquisition unit, and also LabJack, which is the data acquisition unit uh, we're going to use. And in this um, last video, we're going to talk about connecting the LabJack to the computer installing it, getting it set up, and actually acquiring data using a C-sharp uh, application. And mostly we developed that application in the previous video. We're going to copy and paste a lot of what's in that application. Uh, and all we're going to do is add some uh, code that we get from LabJack, C-sharp code, that allows us to very quickly access and grab data from the LabJack. So, in previous videos, again, we went through and uh, in the first video, we talked about using MATLAB, a few, few lines of MATLAB code to generate some analog waveforms, feed it out the audio of this computer into one, an analog channel on the lab jack, and then that does an analog to digital conversion over a USB uh, 3.0 into this computer. And in this computer, we developed a, uh, in, in the second video, a C-sharp application which takes an internally generated waveform and performs a fast Fourier transform. Now in this video, we're going to hook up this lab jack and uh, like I said, use that previous uh, application and modify it. So instead of using an internally generated waveform, it's going to grab data from this lab jack and do a very similar fast Fourier transform. So the first thing we need to install the lab jack and we're going to install for C sharp and .NET. There's other options uh, to install it for different uh, operating systems. So basically you first need to go to the lab jack site, download and install the lab jack U12 installer or whatever um, um, data acquisition unit you have. And that installer will install applications like the LJ scope we talked about, which is which simulates a digital scope uh, and reads data from the uh, LabJack, LJ test, and some other applications that help you configure and uh, set up the uh, LabJack. Once you've got that installed, and that's a fairly, as I recall, it's a fairly simple installation. Uh, you'll also need to get the uh, example code and wrappers for CSharp.net which means you go to the website again, download the zip file labjack.net.zip. Now inside that .zip, there's going to be a couple important things. One is a DLL that you will need to uh, unzip and move to whatever location you want because you're going to need to reference that in any applications that you use to uh, access the labjack. So that's a very important DLL you're going to have to reference. It also includes a Visual Studio solution for C Sharp. So it's all set with much of the C Sharp code you're going to need to uh, read analogs, write analogs, uh, read digitals, write digitals. Uh, so it's called nettest.sln, and you're going to need that out of the labjack.net zip file. So I'm going to assume you've, you've downloaded and installed, and you've got the um, the uh, example code.zip ready. So the next thing you need to do is open that nettest.sln and you're going to be uh, copying some of the important C sharp code to your own project. Again, this is code that's all set, uh, basically some methods that allow you to access, to call the method and access uh, reading analogs, writing analogs, and that kind of thing to the lab jack. So you're going to want to copy a lot of that, and we'll show you uh, what you want to copy and what you aren't going to need. And we'll show you, you're also going to have to reference that uh, DLL, and we'll show you, you're going to have to have a using statement in, um, in your application. So the first thing we're going to do is um, let's look at the solution that you will install, the nettest.sln. And it's going to look a little bit like this. Uh, as you can see, uh, it says you must use the namespace LJ, and it's got using LJ. And you need to, here's the references on the right. 
Uh, you need to do a add reference to the lj.net DLL we just talked about. So that's just references, add reference, and find the, the, the .dll. And then you've got all this code they give you. And basically, it is a bunch of methods. Uh, there's a method throw error message. There's a method get all lab jacks. There's a method read analog input, uh, set analog input, read digital input, and set digital output, AI burst, and AI stream. We're going to need some of those, and some of them we're not going to need. Um, so let me, right off, you can erase some of these or at least comment them out. Uh, you're going to need throw error message, and that's code in there like this. You're going to need get all lab jacks, and that's some code in there. You can just use it the way it is. You're going to need read analog input, and that basically reads from a channel, reads the uh, data from the channel. Set analog input, you're not going to need. So you can just uh, comment that out or delete it. So let's just comment that. Um, and also, read uh, digital inputs, you're not going to need. So you can comment that out. We'll do that. Uh, this other read digital input, you can comment that out. You're not going to need it. Again, you could probably erase these if you want. Set digital outputs. You're going to comment. You're not going to need it. You are going to need AI burst. We're going to use that. AI stream, you're not going to need for what we're doing. So you can comment that out. So there you go. So now you've basically gotten rid of a lot of this. Um, you've just got the AI burst. And you've got the read analog inputs, uh, get all lab jacks, and throw error message. So basically, that's all you're going to need. And you can use these methods the way they are. Now, in the main, um, in the main application here, you're going to have to make some changes. Um, here, you're going to leave this, get all lab jacks. Um, Note that there's a lot of console right, right lines you're going to have to change. Okay, so what I've done is I've opened a brand new Windows Forms application. And I've set it up very similar to the um, uh, uh, application we set up in the previous video. I've got a chart here and a chart here. One is a line graph, one is a bar graph. Uh, this is going to be uh, charting the data coming from the lab jack, and this is going to be doing an FFT. And I've got a I've got two buttons here and a FFT button similar to what I had before. And I've also got a uh, text box so I can put some data in here. Um, but basically, it's a very similar to the form I had before. And we'll talk about what we're going to do with each of these. Uh, so in the application, what I've done is I've basically copied from the net test. I've copied these methods, throw error message, get all lab jacks, read analog input, AI burst, the ones I said you need, just basically copied those methods into my Windows Forms application. So I've got the form, and then I've got these methods I've copied in. Now I've added event handlers for the button click. This is for the get lab jack, which basically connects to the lab jack and grabs the data. And I've got a button exit. That's a simple exit. And then I've got this capture button, which can do a uh, capture. Every time I click the button, it will grab data from the lab jack. And that's basically this capture button. So it's the event handler. And basically it goes through and captures data in a burst of data from the lab jack. And then the, the other button I've got is basically a copy of the FFT. So whenever I click this FFT button, it calculates an FFT of this data that came from the lab jack and puts it in this uh, second chart. Okay, so let's go through and I'll show you what I've done in detail. Um, now here we are at the, I've copied um, some of the code 
from the uh, nettest.sln into this button one click, and that's the get lab jack. And basically what it does, it, it, it looks to see if there's any lab jacks connected to the USB port. And this code right here is basically just a copy of what came with the nettest.sln. It does, it calls get all lab jacks, uh, if, checks to see if any were found, and if not, it, it adds to this text box a little notice that no, we didn't find any. So this code right here is pretty much the same. I've only changed it to, to allow for a text box output. So that's pretty much the same. Okay, and now this right here is the most important line of code. It basically calls this AI burst method and grabs data from the lab jack. You tell it how many samples and it calls this AI burst method. And you, you can see you, you tell it how many scans and it returns a two dimensional array of floats. Okay, so basically it, it, it grabs the data and returns it into this array. That is all you really need to get data from the lab jack. Very simple. Um, so now we've got this array of data from the lab jack, however many samples we specified. And what I do here is I convert those into the same type of array, a complex array of values that we can use to do the FFT. And you recall in the, in the previous video, we had an array called samples, which was an, a single dimensional array of complex values. So I'm taking this array coming back from the AI burst method, and I am populating a, the same samples array to make it easier. And I'm taking each element of this uh, array that was returned and making that the real value of this complex array and zero as the imaginary value. So no different from the previous uh, video, we're just, instead of uh, using this V, we're using samples, a single dimensional array. So we've got the array, and here I've just got some data chart formatting for this uh, chart here that we're gonna plot this um, input data. And here I just go through for I equals zero to however many um, samples we wanna chart. And I chose only 400, so we can see the waveform fairly clearly. And again, I'm setting a, um, a time value, which is I over the number of samples. That tells you how much time for each, um, each element in the array. And then we just chart it. Again, same as the last time. Add an XY point, and the, the X value is T, whatever the time is. And VI is the... Um, value for each um, element. So now uh, I'm not gonna go through the details of formatting the charts. I think we don't, went through that in the previous videos. But now we're pretty much all set to be able to grab data from the lab jack and plot it in our chart. So I'll go to my other computer and run the, the MATLAB script that generates the, the uh, waveforms and sends them out the uh, sound card and into the lab jack. So I just turned on the um, output, so it should be coming into the lab jack. So I'll start this and press this get lab jack. And you can see it did a um, thousand samples and it plotted it from zero to 0 0.4 seconds. And so we're all set, it works fine. And um, now we can move on to doing the FFT. So um, again, these methods are the standard methods that allow you to access the lab jack. Uh, this button exit, we're not gonna have to look at. Now this um, other button, I've got a separate capture button. So after I load the signal, uh, I can at any time press that capture button and capture another burst of data. Uh, you don't have to do that. It's basically a copy of, this, of what I did in the, uh, in the previous um, method where I just loaded. So I won't go through that. It's basically the same thing. You can do that. Uh, the other thing is you can set that to automatically capture every you know, 10 seconds or every minute. Um, so I won't talk about that. This is the important one that does the fast Fourier transform. 
And again, it's basically a copy of what we did before in the previous video. And the main important code here is this right here, where we do Fourier.forward from the MathNet libraries. And we're putting in samples, and we have this Fourier options. Here, I've just got some chart formatting. Again, I'm not going to go through that. I went through that last time. So once I do the Fourier, it overwrites that samples array with the Fourier values. And then it goes for each value in that um, samples array. It basically calculates the magnitude and plots it on the chart. Okay, so we're all set now. Let me, um, I turned on the output from the uh, MATLAB and the other computer. It's feeding into the lab jack, so let me get the data. And here's the scan. And what I can do is click this FFT, and there you go. You've got the three um, frequencies at 60 hertz, 120 hertz, and 180 hertz plotted on this um, FFT. So, um, Again, the, the text box is just um, when you, you found the lab jack, it tells you what ID. You can, you can connect many lab jacks to the USB, to a USB hub. Uh, and then it tells you it did the a, uh, AI burst, um, analog input burst, and how many scans. So basically, you're all set. We've got um, it's reading from the lab jack, and you ask it to do an FFT, it does an FFT, and that's about it. So hope this has been helpful. Take care and have a really good day.